So we're gonna go through the process of replacing the e-brake cable. This Jeep's a 97, it's been stretched over the years and just does not grab anymore. So what I did so far as I pulled off obviously the center console, yeah, it's a mess, so I'll vacuum this up. Uh, when this is down, there's a little pin like this that slides through lever under the bottom. You can see right there. And actually through the cable right there that you see. And then it's locked in place with a little retaining clip, little C-clip. Um, and then what I just did is I loosened this bolt. I'll take that out. And I loosen this bolt. Sorry about my hand. Take that out. They're both the same length, so no big deal. I'll move this guy. And now, this one here, just got to push these suckers in, which is going to be difficult because that's metal. And then there was a screw right here I took out. I'm not sure if I needed to, but what I'm going to do now is get these pushed in. Probably a, uh, a pipe clamp or something. Push this, hug that all in, and then push this cable through is what I'm thinking. Since I'm doing this with my phone, eh, I'm going to have to just do it in pieces right now. So actually I decided to unscrew this bolt here and this bolt here. Mine actually came out. Now, looks like I could lift this up because I think I got to get to that where I had this screw here. I'm going to have to get to that anyway because there's a second one back there. Um, once I push that through to get this cable out of here. So that's why I did that. So yeah, that's all I did. So I took those out. Unplug this little guy. It's your wires for your brake right there. And I was able to just actually kind of push, like squeeze it in with some channel locks and wiggle it. Actually, came up pretty easy. So move that out of the way. So now we see here we got that other screw. Where did I put my screwdriver? Is that one the right size? I'll just undo this and uh, see where we're at here. So there we go. And actually, oh, two screws. One there, then one on the other side. So now this will be able to come out. Looks like I got a penny or something wedged in there. Dime maybe. Yep. So now I'll go underneath, see what kind of hardware is under there, and and do this from the other side because I got a new one of these. Because I know I'm stretched everywhere. Once you're under here, we're going to. Loosen this nut here, so we'll back this nut off and then you'll get some slack and then we could slide these cables out. Uh, this one will pop out sooner or later. You can kind of see how it's set up. So I just need a bit more slack and then I'll pop it off there. And then same as these front ones, I get a bit more slack. And then I'll, uh, I'll slide these guys out here. Then I'll remove this mechanism too, because I have a also new one of these and new ones of these cables that go down to inside. Looks like I'm going to be able to uh, get that out now. Mine actually, everything so far has been pretty easy. Because um, I've been, just over the years, I guess I spray, spray in here. Oh. I spoke too soon. Uh, oh, there we go. So I want to pop out. These ones must pop out too. They just gotta be 
situated the right way. Rotated. Let me loosen this a bit more. I think you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I'm just, you know, my channel locks on one end, and I'm just, I'm, just, I'm backing this right off. Because it looks like you got to, uh, they don't slide out the way you would think. So, I'll just die here. I should wear safety glasses. That's a shit falling in my eyes. There you can see I got that off. That's the part. Yeah, they don't, uh, they slide out on a, you gotta slide them in perpendicular into these holes. They won't slide out like kinda up and down. It's gotta be angled this way to slide those cables in. So now what I'll do is I'd spray a little bit of brake cleaner in here to clean out these things so there's no dirt in behind it. And also this one. And then the same thing, uh, squeeze them together and then push them through. That one, I think I'm gonna need a little kind of like pipe hose clamp and then tighten it up with the hose clamp and then slide it through. Go look for one of those. Well, that's done. Except I had to bust out the grinder. It was driving me nuts. So I cut off these ends, but then I still couldn't get it off. So with these guys in there like that, I just took the grinder and zipped off the ends. And then all those tabs fell off. And then I could just pop it out. And then that for all three of them. It was driving me insane. Uh, and then this part, after that, I could just... Pop it out. Now I go get my other two. So there's a part, one part here. I got a new one, new part for here, your adjustment cables. And then for these ones going down to your uh, drums, these you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to jack up the back of the vehicle. And I believe take the entirety of the drum brake kit off to get access to that one there so I could insert the new cable. So that I'm not tackling that tonight. I think I'll do that tomorrow. But that wasn't too bad. Uh, probably just a good idea to get out the grinder right off the bat. There you can see a bit closer. I just took the grinder and cut around there and all the little tabs fell off and it was easy to come out. And there's the three pieces. Grind it off, a little bit of the cable. Your adjusting mechanism. And that's the other spot that goes in the Jeep. I'll get the new parts out tomorrow. Now well, it's the next day. Got it jacked up. Got the brakes apart. They're sitting there. And these are the cables. I go in there and then go through. They're the same on both sides. You can see this is the old one where I cut it earlier. So we're just gonna plop this guy through and then I'll just show you a little quick video of what it looks like. Yeah, we're just gonna slide it through right there, connect it to this guy, uh, 
put him back up here. This one is my first side, so I'm just kind of taking my time, but I'll video the other side better. That side's done. Took a little finagling and got it on. So I just got that hanging. Now I'll go do the other side and uh, see if I could record it in real time, me doing it. It's definitely a fucking pain in the ass. If you know anything about these guys. Not fun. video stuff like this so I could see how to put it together after in case I forget but I got the other side as a reference too so not too bad see that cable's tight on there I'll just sometimes push these in with my thumbs. Not that one. Too tight. So I'm going to try to keep mostly everything together here. around all that. All the settings. I don't want to mess with that. So when it comes out, clean that up in a sec. Now these tabs, oh, I'll pull this out because I had sliced my cable up there so I could do that.
Well, they did on the other side. So just kind of pull this out, push in pieces. It's great. And cursed. Struggled for quite some time. So we'll see if that happens on this side too. I was looking for an O-ring, or like a little uh, pipe, uh, and there's a horizontal piece. A little pipe, hose clamp, but I don't have one on me, so. Then I might have to take a grinder to this. I'm just trying to pull in a push in a tab and pull and rotate at the same time. Push in a tab, rotate it a bit. Push in a tab and pull. You know what? I think I'm just gonna break up the fucking grinder. Fuck this. And just to clean up some of this old crap that's in here. Don't need that getting in all this new.
Okay, so on the old one too, it's a little rubber boot. See that? A little rubber boot. We've got to get it off. So we'll just roll it. And roll it off, I guess. If we can. That little rubber boot. And we'll put on the new one. Just right here. And this is the end that goes in the back. And it's the big part of the boot that goes on like that, the little part. And then we'll just roll that over the slip. Like that. Now, we'll push this in. It'll come over the back. And push it in through the hole. There's a little locking tab. And there it goes. That is in. I'm not coming out. That's locked in. Okay. Clean this little guy out. Yeah, I probably should have some gloves on. That would be a good idea. Hello. Hi. Goes this way, so this works in like that. Now, this part. This tab here goes in the break. Opening part. Right there. Pull that up a little bit. Oh, forgot one step. Put this back. The grease. A little bit of grease on these contacts here. Five or six or seven. Okay, so that should do. All right. It's connected. It's great. Kind of got to rotate them. Get close here, it might be in your way, but this guy on the bottom. This guy goes on the back side. This little knot. I'm on my cable to kind of tighten it up, make sure it's not coming out anywhere. It's like so. Now, this guy. Kind of 
and lock him in place. And you'll be able to see what you're doing once you take it apart so you can see how they work together. There's a little groove here on your e-brake uh, little part and your brake part, but that locks them together. Let's situate it like that. If I remember right, now we go with this cable and this hook. Oh, wait. Which side did that go on? Yeah, so this side here. Just go like that. Which side did I take off first? That is the question. I can't remember. Those are tight. Actually, this goes on first. This little part faces out, and then this little hook it goes on first. I want to say this one was second. I gotta pause and see what's going on. Can't remember. I put the spring on first or second. And it was, oh, I restarted. And it was on first. So, back. actually slides behind a little notch here. And it's not a break video. So a little groove he slides in. Strangely, this side's so much tighter than the other side. I'm just sliding the cable up over. Trying to move this little adjuster and give it some slack as I do it.
There we go. That's in place. Now for the fun part, put in the locking mechanisms. one but you just try to line up the spades the best you can and then push them together and hope for the best. Pushing it with my thumb. I should have bought that tool. So close to buying it, and I should have never even let it go.
I'm gonna have to. <sighs> Fuck. You know what? I'm gonna just pause this because you guys are fucking. Those are your marbles. Well, I got this side done pretty much as soon as I shut the camera off. These ones got finished. But yeah, there's some. I, I don't understand it, but this side, this cable for the e brake goes down here. This side's fairly snug and the other side's loose. So I'm not sure what is going on there. Why that is. Um, I think they would be even Steven. Anyway, now I'm going to get under there and put on, let's see. Oh, we have the center piece is the part number and the original one we took out. And then this doohickey, the adjuster, is the one we got. And there's the part number. It should be pretty straightforward. This guy should just drop in the place. Um, yeah. Let's just, yeah, I mean, let's just open it up right now and do what we got. Let's see. Move this. Do this with one hand here. So, uh, this goes, how does this go? Oh, uh, is this down there? Oh no, because we have two holes here, and two holes there. So this goes like this, there we go. Now I just got to put three screws in there, and then we know how we took this apart. But I'll show you as soon as I can, I get sit it in here and put that guy there, and then we have the plate. This plate that kind of bolts in there. I'll go under there. Uh, yeah, let me get situated here and then I'll put this in. So remember I was saying that cable was loose when that goes to the e-brake. I don't know if you I noticed this wasn't even hitting your little adjuster. Uh, so I went back and I took these springs off and this here has a little, it's a male kind of backside to this that goes into a female hole. And if it's not slid in there properly, it gaps a little bit and moves and you only lose a couple mils, but that couple mils makes this wire loose. And that wire is what connects to your, your e-brake down here and it actually pulls it up and makes it come into contact that really well. So you do the clicks, right? Um, so this side actually I had to adjust also, but it was tighter than the other side. And then when I went to the other side, mine was really bad. <laughs> so I adjusted it and fixed it. Um, everything was in contact. This was in contact down there, but the cable was loose. And that's when I, I noticed um, this half a moon when I was looking at it. You see a nice half a moon visible. A little bit of the half a moon was was kind of hidden behind the spring because like I said that male and female kind of backing to that uh, the male uh, part of that little bracket that goes into the female part of the brake pad wasn't they weren't connected so it shifted a little bit causing that wire to be really loose so now it's all tight so just something to look look for when you're putting it back together uh, that's a critical critical kind of connection point and it's actually easy to kind of screw up because it'll still go together and things will still be functional okay I'm gonna put these on and adjust the brakes uh, just so I have a little bit of resistance then I'm gonna get inside so I want to get these three screws screwed in Nice little snug. I don't have to go too nuts. And 
Now you slide this guy. Put the cable through there and through the hole because once you're through these little splines, these fish hooks, uh, you ain't coming back out unless you use that kind of trick with uh, uh, kind of a pipe uh, hose clamp. So I'm just going to push it through. Through, and then now just line up the bolts, and then bolt that sucker on. Just gonna find my bolts, so I'll do that right now. One there, one there. Here's the other one. Well, this one goes here, but that's for the handle once I get there. Okay, I'm just going to bolt this up and I'll come back. So there's that. Just bolted those two bottom bolts. Now this guy sits up here, but you'll see a little slot right there, which goes over that guy. And you're just moving around. But then once you bolt the top in, get that in there. You slide this little pin through the hole there, so you retain that, and then you slide this guy in on the other end, and then that's locked in place. So let's get that done. Sir, sure, that's all done. That took maybe about a minute. You know, good vacuuming in here. And if anybody's wondering, these are all 10 mil. So the last thing, I guess, is plug on the retainer. So that's that. So now let's go underneath and see what's happening. I fucked up. As you can see, this got to back out. And I got to take that top off to get it back in there. Son of a bitch. Sweet. Looks like I just had to take out those four bolts. I still even left that connected. And then I'm able to just kind of pull this whole unit back and forth. So, get that where it needs to be on the other side. And here we are. So, that cable in there. Do this without. Tight now. Well, it's got to have two people. Ooh. Fuck. It's really tight. I'm going to go up top and give it a little push to kind of get it closer. Damn. Maybe I grab it with my channel box. Sorry about my grunting. Yeah, I have to put this down for a sec while I uh, try to wiggle that in with these channel locks. So I got that fixed. Wasn't too bad. And these guys, I decided to come out, you know, where they come out of there, and then go up over the top uh, control arm here. And I noticed these guys got a little sleeve on them, so I'm going to put that sleeve right at the control arm, right about you know, somewhere around there, uh, to keep these curves nice. And then I'm gonna just zip tie the zip tie it up right there, because the old ones, the originals, had something like this that's so on this brake line, connected to the original control arm. Um, but with the new, it doesn't have it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Right now, I'm just gonna grab this guy and um, 
so this is the spot this one goes here which is fairly easy oh, geez. Um, but this guy here I'm gonna have to take it off because uh, I feel I don't know if you remember when I dismantled it um, kind of can't get it on it's got to go in perpendicular so I'm gonna take this nut off I think it's on pretty good I'm gonna need two hands that's a 13 mil if you're wondering Oh, actually, I'd be able to do this. Yeah. Ooh, that's a 13 mil. I'll just put that there. So that'll have to go on. Like that. Then rotate. And then, I don't put that nut. And this will have to go through there. This is where I'll need two hands because I'm gonna have to tighten this and hold this with my uh, uh, channel locks and then tighten this part here. I'll take most of the slack out of it and check the e brake and see how it feels. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, I think the camera changed angle as I'm just uh, you're just leaning up on top of my. Uh, differential. So I'm just kind of tightening this up. This is how you get the slack out of it. And this is how you adjust your e-brake. So I'm going to get it till it's just a little snug. Everything's still all loose, so I'm going to go a little bit tighter. super tight, but pretty tight. <laughs> Before, I had this nut on my old one all the way to the absolute end, and it was still loose. So right now, I'll just go give my uh, e-brake a little pull and see how firm it is. You know, if it's three or four clicks and it starts to get stiff, I think well, that'll go back to it. it off a little bit and just see how well I hold on a hill so I don't want it to be pushing against uh, I don't want my pads to be uh, lefty loosey righty tighty I don't want my pads to be uh, rubbing for the first little bit so we'll keep it a little Keep it loose and then I'll go for a drive. I'm gonna sit on a hill and then pull it. So, yeah, so that's, I know for sure there, that's not gonna be too tight because we're half decently loose. So, all I'll do now is I'll go for a drive, bring my two tools with me, and then I'll uh, adjust it. So, I'll show you where I zip tied these things. This camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna sit tight them right here. It should hold, but it seem pretty strong. It's not like you go crazy with the e-brake all day, every day. So I think that'll fly. Cut those little ties later. I don't know what all the sponge was for. They have this sponge on there too. Must be just for points that you think it might rub or something, or maybe it slides over the end there. 
I'm not sure. Have any ideas? Maybe let me know. Yeah, they're all only on uh, one side of that little metal sleeve. There's none below it. Same as on the other one. There's none uh, below that metal sleeve. They're all uh, all the sponge sponge things are above it. Well, that's it. That's how you put in an e-brake. And now I'm gonna go and test it out. Hope you like this video. I just couldn't find any when I was looking it up, especially, you know, you found out how to adjust this. You didn't find out about replacing this because this stretches too. And you didn't find out about getting in here because probably it's a fucking nightmare. But you've seen how I did it. Hopefully this helps out somebody else. And you can see like before I had this bolt tightened all the way to the end and I still had no e-brake. So it goes to show you over the years how much this cable stretched and this cable stretched. Um, you know, this, I just got a new one because my hardware was all kind of, I don't know, why not, right? If I'm going to replace this one, might as well replace this one, this uh, adjustable section here. And I'm putting in new ones of these, so just why not? But yeah, so I had a ton of stretch in these. And probably a stretch in this too. Probably less of a chance it was in this, but still, why not? But, but yeah, before, nut to here, still loose. Now I'm not even halfway and, uh, you know, I'm a little bit loose right now, but a couple turns and I'm tight. All right, hope this helped. Talk to you guys later. Enjoy. Bye. Well, everything is done. It's adjusted. Um, I don't know if anybody else has a TJ, but these e-brakes suck no matter what. No matter what you do, they suck. And if you are paint pointing uphill, nose uphill, and you put the e-brake on, you're still going to roll back. No matter how tight you try to get it. It's just the nature of the beast. But if you're pointing downhill, uh, nose downhill, it works incredible. Um, it'll hold you if you were pulling a, a 10 ton trailer. Um, but yeah, pointing uphill, going backwards. No, you're going to stay loose. Um, especially once you get bigger tires too. So I went and I adjusted it the best I could and you could see like it clicks, you know, it, it a couple, a couple pulls and it's starting to lock up. Uh, if I'm going all the way uphill, I got to if my nose is pointing uphill, I got to pull it right up to here for it to stick. And then I'm still slowly sliding back. Uh, but going forward, only a couple pulls and it locks. So I'll show you under here. And even I adjusted it. So I zip tied here, here, just to have this cable all really nice and secure. Everything is secure. And you could see... I adjusted the shit out of it. And you know, I still have a bit, uh, let's see. Yeah, I still got about an inch of thread back there to adjust, but these e-brakes, they just suck. If you think you're gonna be able to <clears throat> park on a hill pointing uphill, no, ain't gonna happen. Nose pointing downhill, yeah, incredible. Um, if anything, it's almost like these need a spacer in here. So if I back this nut all the way off and I put some sort of spacer in here, then it would give you a lot more adjustment room. But even then, like I think it might be, you might wanna, you, you might be adjusting it just too much. Uh, and I got a feeling I'm gonna end up breaking, uh, breaking my pads because I'll be pulling up the handle too tight, trying to hold myself up on a hill. Uh, with my nose pointing up the hill, like a 45 degree hill. I think it's not going to happen uh, with these drum brakes. Um, and the more I try it, and the more I try to adjust it, um, it's just, I'll end up breaking the shoes. And when I adjusted the brakes too, um, I adjusted the little wheel, and I spun it as hard as I could, and I adjusted it until I got one full rotation on the wheel, and before it come to a stop on itself. So I know the pads are adjusted properly before I even adjusted this. 
Um, so yeah, if you're looking for your TJ to be able to hold itself on a 45 degree incline um, with nose pointing up the hill, uh, it's not going to happen. It just will not happen. Nose pointing down the hill? Yes, for sure. Incredible. Um, yeah, the grab is just incredible. It must just be the way the shoes are situated. Uh, going forward, they must just lock them, lock them into place. But yeah, going backwards, no dice. But anyway, it works a lot better than it did. That's for sure. If it's only on, like on a 20 degree angle or something like that, I hold, I stick. But if I go on like a 45, yeah, I'm sliding back. It's not even worth trying because I'm going to end up uh, breaking my shoes. So hope this video helps uh, some people. Like, comment, let me know what you think. I know the videotaping wasn't the greatest or the recording, but did my best. Trying to help somebody out there. All right. Cheers. Have a good one.